big news today involving crypto, including Elon Musk, presidential candidates, big update involving Cardano, and let's start with Elon. Breaking. Tesla has added Bitcoin back into their code for payments on their website. And don't just take my word for this, like right now, anybody can go on the Tesla website right now and check this for yourself. Bitcoin's now in the code. And now looking back at Elon Musk's last public interview. Inflation is going to happen no matter what. If you increase the money supply, you get inflation. Right. So there's no, there's not some magical cure for getting rid of inflation. The federal government, uh, unlike state governments or city governments uh, or individuals, can simply issue more money. I mean, as old saying goes, there's no, there's no free lunch. Um, so uh, if you could just issue massive amounts of money without negative consequences, why don't we just take that to the limit and make everyone a trillionaire? What's, well, they, I mean, they tried that in Venezuela. How'd that, how'd that work out? And again, maybe this Cardano news is even bigger. I'll play you this video in a second. But anybody can go to the Tesla website right now, go to the website's payment section, right click, click inspect, click sources on the top, click search, then type Bitcoin. So searching for Bitcoin, then click the code that comes up and then scroll down until you see Bitcoin in the code, just like this. And now cryptocurrency is on the national stage as presidential candidates make it a talking point. RFK Jr., who's a Democratic presidential hopeful, vows to back the dollar with Bitcoin if elected, as well as exempt BTC from taxes. The Kennedy administration will exempt the conversion of Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar from capital gains taxes. And, and there are downsides to this policy that we have considered carefully, including, and I want to be explicit about this, that this kind of policy um, will uh, do something that is inconsistent with, with many of the other policy objectives of my administration, which will give a windfall uh, to some of the investors or the early investors in Bitcoin, many of you whom have a great deal of money and don't need a windfall. But the, the benefits of this policy, I think, are so great to our country uh, that uh, that they dwarf the disadvantages of that outcome. Secondly, uh, the Kennedy administration will begin to back the U.S. dollar with real finite assets such as gold, silver, platinum, and Bitcoin, um, which is the world's hardest liquid asset to strengthen the U.S. dollar and guarantee its continued success as the world reserve currency. Uh, this will include U.S. Treasury bills, notes, and bonds. Um, my plan would be to start very, very small. Perhaps 1% of issued T-bills would be backed by hard currency, by gold, silver, platinum, or Bitcoin. Um, and then, uh, uh, depending on the outcome, we would increase that annually. And what this will do is it will, it will ironically, we will be able to use Bitcoin to help save the U.S. dollar. And it's not just Democrats. It's also the U.S. House Republican Committee members introduce a joint digital assets bill. So this just got announced yesterday. And its purpose, its intent, is to address regulatory gaps by creating a framework for the specific risks of different digital asset-related activities. And probably the biggest thing, this bill would give the CFTC jurisdiction over digital commodities. It would clarify the jurisdiction of the SEC and create a process for digital assets originally deemed securities to then be sold as commodities. So this would be huge. And of course, the thing I like the best about this, the bill also sets conditions for cryptocurrency to be considered a commodity with a decentralization being the main requirement. And speaking of that, CEO of Cardano, Charles Hoskinson, has just given an update on CIP Cardano Improvement Proposal 1694, Cardano's next upgrade, as well as a message on how Cardano wins. The single most important thread amongst all of this is realizing that we all have to upgrade the EQ, not just the IQ. Cardano has the highest IQ, 180 papers and moon math and all kinds of magic. And it's not easy to 
write active specifications. It's not easy to write Haskell code. Uh, people absolutely understand the rigor, discipline, and sheer brilliance of the research side. What's missing is the human element. If we're going to win, if we're truly going to get to number one, we don't have leaders. We have each other. And that means we have to work well together, which means we have to understand each other. We have to listen to each other. We have to have a high degree of empathy for each other's positions and truly try to understand, not talk at and shout over, but listen to each other in a way that allows us to learn from each other and understand each other's values. Then and only then can we get to one backlog that we can all agree is a useful backlog for moving forward. The debate cannot be done on Twitter. Certainly you can try to drag it there, but remember that social media is built from the ground up to divide us, make us angry, and to reduce the depth of a conversation to something shallow. It's also fundamentally unfair to think people are one dimensional. The reality is we're very complicated. So Charles, in part, besides the EQ IQ, in part is also explaining the upgrade of CIP 1694, an on-chain decentralized governance mechanism for Cardano, and the two new fields that will be added to normal transaction bodies are governance action and votes. Meaning again, the people are more in control, the people have more power. So one of the biggest areas of upgrades and emphasis is not to do with protocols or software at all. It has to do with communication and it has to do with respect and empathy. It's going to be tough because uh, we all have to grow. We all have to learn. But if we do that, we will have created an ecosystem that is worthy of having a billion users and transforming the entire world. If we fail to do that, the best case scenarios, we will have produced a lot of really interesting technology and potentially some market value for that technology, but will be a footnote in history as we get replaced by the people who did figure that out. This ecosystem is built for everybody by everybody for the purpose of making everything everywhere better for everyone. That's just the fact. And that's the intent. So we'll get there. It's just going to be a little while. Some people like to point out that there's been delays. Some people like to point out that we missed some deadlines. Some people like to point out that version one wasn't as good as it needed to be. Those people tend to forget that the iPhone launched without the App Store or 3G. Do you remember that? Because that's not what great products are about. Great products at the end of the day brought the vision, the community, and ultimately the evolution. How fast can they get something new and interesting? And how do they take that new and interesting thing and really give you some experience you've never had before? That is the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow.